a build show. Steve Basic Architect here. Today, we're going to talk about the three components of a wall assembly. Now, some of them might be pretty obvious. Obviously, we have sheathing, we have framing, and then we have openings, right? So the idea here in the video is, talk, is to talk about the building science behind the three components, right, and how they add up. A lot of times I have conversations with builders, architects, even homeowners say, oh, I built a home, I got R40 walls, or I have R30 walls. Um, or if it's a code built house, I got an R21 wall system. Well, what they're really measuring is the insulation in the center of the cavity. But it doesn't tell the whole story about what's happening with the whole wall. Because as you can see behind me, the wall is not only made up of the cavity, it's made up of some framing members, and it's made up of openings, windows and doors that we put inside the wall. So we have those three major components as well as the sheathing that gets placed on the outside of it. Now, in a typical house, we'd go to 16 inch on center framing. So, which means the spacing between the studs is 16 inches. Here, we pushed them out to 24 inches on, on center. And the reason for pushing them out is, is I could change what I call the opaque area of the wall where the framing members are and I can take some of that percentage out of the wall system and increase the cavity width overall in the whole wall R value system, right? So if I go to 24 inches on center, there's probably about a six or 7% shift in the composition of the wall, meaning it goes from framing members to cavity. Why is that important? Well, at a two by six stud, I'm somewhere around R6 six and short change, but in the center of the cavity, I might be at that R21-ish number. So it's almost three and a half times the R value in the center of the cavity than it is at the stud. So I really want to have more cavity space and less stud space, but I don't want to challenge the structure to fall down either, right? So durability first, and then energy efficiency. Now, the other part of the equation is windows and doors. In a house like this, custom house, you're probably somewhere in like an 18 to 22 range. I use 20% because it's an easy number to do the math on. But the windows there are a huge choice because they're one fifth of the wall assembly. And if I choose an R3 window versus say a European that's R7, 7.5, then I can almost double at, or better that R value by moving up to a better window like a triple glaze system, right? So if I take those three components and I normalize them across the wall and say, okay, 20% for windows and doors, say 66-ish percent for the cavity, and then where I have the opaque framing, I'm probably in that 14 or 15% of what I'm doing here at 24 inches on center. Now, one way to increase that assembly's performance drastically is to put an R sheathing or an insulated sheathing on the outside. Here we're using Zips R system. It's an R9 polyisocyanurate inch and a half rigid foam that gets laminated inside the OSB shear panel. Now, why is that important? Well. At my cavity where it's R21, if I add the R9, I instantly go to R30 here. But at the stud where I'm at, say, that R6 and change, I immediately go to an R15 on where all those framing members are. And more than double the R value of where my framing members are. So anyways, let's go back to the studio. I got some uh, wall elevations. We'll talk about these numbers and we'll make a little bit more sense of it. I'll see you back at the studio. All right, I got my good friend Big Red here. We have a couple walls here. And uh, yeah, let's take a deep dive and we'll talk about uh, maybe a little bit how the industry tends to mislead and uh, actually talk about our values of wall systems. So anyways, without further ado, we got them, we got the details here. Let's get after it. Well, you heard me talk about it out there. There's basically three 
components to a wall system. All right? There are the window and door. There is what I call the opaque. And that is basically the frame. And then there is the cavity. And that's where we typically put insulation. But if we look at, and we have three walls here. This one here is a two by six, 16 inch on center wall. It has four openings in there. I don't know, it's probably 48 feet long, something like that. That really doesn't matter. What matters is that these three are consistent and we compare um, apples to apples. So the two by six, 16 inch on center. Um, the opaque frame, well, it constitutes about 20%. The cavity, 60, and then the windows and doors, 20%. Now, some of you might, before you go off the rails on me, you know, it might be, yes, the opaque frame could be 21 or 22% if you have a framer gone rogue. Could be 18 or 19% if you have a very diligent framer um, that uh, doesn't use as much wood as some others. The same with doors and windows. This is kind of an average um, that you'll find across the board for, a, you know, a decent custom home, one that's not glass walls, but has a decent amount of glass, but it's not your spec home with, you know, 12 or 14% glass either. So the other number here is their respective R values. So the opaque frame is R7, the cavity is R21, and the windows roughly R3. So some domestic 0 .30 windows, um, R21 code for the cavity, and then R7 is the two by six. I use, you know, 1.25 per inch. Um, some people use R1, which would be R5 and a half, but I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Now, the reality is, is if I take all of these numbers, now remember, the, the highest number is the R21, and but that's only for 60% of the wall. A little bit more than half is R21. One-fifth of the wall is R7, and one-fifth of the wall is R3. So those are significantly, I mean, this is a third of that, and this is one-seventh of that number. So when I take these three and I normalize them, meaning average their R value according to their percentage, then I get roughly R8 for that wall. Now, those of you that are going to go out there and just take these R values and say, oh, R7 at 20%, 21 at 60%, R3 at 60%, you can't just normalize the R values. You actually need to take the R, you need to convert it to a U value, which is 1 over R, and then take those by the percentage, come up with a total U, and then take the total U and convert it back to R. And that's how I get the R8. You have to use U value because R value is tested. All of these things are tested in isolation. So cavity insulation is tested there, but the minute you ins insert stud work or you'll see insulating sheathing and different things, well, according to the assembly, energy is going to move differently through there, right? It's going to be a little cooler along the edges of those cavities than it is in the center of the cavity, right? So you can't really just take the R values and average them. You have to switch it to the U value when you're dealing with assemblies. That's why windows, if you notice, windows are never measured in R value. Windows are always measured in U value. And the reason they're measured in U value is because you have the IGU, you have the frame, you have air spaces, you have Swiss spacers or um, whatever the case is, you have a, a whole series of different components that make up the assembly to be tested. And every one of those components is 
shedding energy or moving energy, heat energy, in a different way. And they're not consistent. The same here. The, the heat energy that's trying to get out, if we're in a cold climate, that's the assumption here, and we're trying to move energy through the stud, through the glass, or through the cavity, it's all moving at a different rate because they're different insulation values. So if I really want to capture the R value of the whole wall, I have to deal in U value. So moving down the wall, if we take that wall and we simply go to 24 inches on center, that takes our 20% and knocks it down to 14% in opaque. That 6% increases our cavity by 6% to 66, but our windows stay the same. Look what happens. It bumps it up to R9. So from there to here, we're at literally plus R1. So it does improve it a little, um, but I just want you to understand that when you go to a 24 inch on center, it's not doubling the R value. It's not increasing it by 20%. It's not increasing it by 10%. Well, maybe about 10%. That's about what it is. Somewhere in that 10% range of an increase. So, but if we come down here to the last wall and we do the two by six 24 inches on center and we add an R9 to the outside, <clears throat> and we upgrade our windows to a Euro tilt turn um, to roughly R7 on the windows. So we still have our 14%, so it's building on that. We still have our 66% building on that, our 20% of the windows. The only difference between this wall and this wall is the fact that our wall insulation at our opaque frame increased by R9. So that standard R7 plus R9 is R16 now. So we're 16 at the frame. Here we're only seven. At the windows, we're R7. Up here, we're at three. And for the cavity, we're at 21. But here, the cavity, we are at 30 six, right? And the reason we're at 36, let me just clarify that because this is for weird, I use the example out of the build show built Boston. This wall here is not only the R9, but it is a splash of two inches of closed cell spray foam, right? So what that means is that the cavity insulation is um, what's that? Roughly about you know 12, 13 plus the 2021. 20, so that gets us, or <coughs> yeah, that gets us to roughly about R27 in the wall, and then the R9 that gets us to R36. Is that right? Yeah. So, but anyways, that has to do with the fact that we're going to flash some close cell spray in there. But the, the important thing here to understand is that our cavity increased to 36. But most importantly, look what it does to the frame. Up here, our frame was at R7. Now it's at R16. That's over double the amount of insulation. So that continuous... Um, zip R sheathing that we're putting out there is doing a tremendous job because not only is that zip R sheathing accounting for that 14, but it's also accounting for that 66. So that's 80% of the wall has continuous insulation. And we get the benefit from that. Remember, what's the continuity or the, the favorite word in building science, continuity. It is the key. But anyways, if we take that wall with those numbers, we get up and we are at R18. Pretty much doubled the R value um, by doing that splash, increasing the windows, and providing 
that zip R9 on the outside of the wall. Here. So increasing 80% of that wall, it changes that number. So 18, 9, and 8. So you can see as we progressively move, all of these decisions that we make make significant enhancements to the wall system. So that's why there's such an argument for continuous insulation on the outside. I'll leave you with a short story. Um, when I, my days at Building Science Corporation, I had the chance to uh, sit down one afternoon, have lunch with a gentleman, Gus Handegord, probably the uh, most notable building scientist at the time um, in North America, if not the world. Extremely, extremely um, smart gentleman in the field of building science. And uh, me being a young architect, I didn't know a whole lot, but I knew that I had an opportunity here. So I said, hey, Gus, all right, we're having lunch. It's just me and you in the room. What is the secret sauce to a good wall system? Like, what, what, what can I take with me through life? He said, Steve, put as much continuous insulation on the outside of the building, and you're probably never going to go wrong. So, so there you have it. The words of Gus Handegord, not me. 80% on the outside gets us up there. And here is the story about wall R value. There you have it. Continuity. It is the key. Well, there you have it. Not hiding anything anymore. So, yeah. That little misleading language or tendencies that we have in the building industry, well, we just provided a little bit of clarity to it. So anyways, if you're looking for more, Steve Basic Architect on Instagram. You can also find me on the Unbuild It podcast. Team up with good friends, Jake Bruton, Peter Yost, and uh, the trio uh, talks building science and building all day long. So go check it out. Um, lastly, Build Show Network. Yeah, we're here. You're watching the videos. Watch them seven times. Science says, not me. Um, literally, thousands of videos. Hundreds of them are mine. But uh, notably, uh, we have a Build Show Build um, original going on right now. Build Show Build Boston. So go check it out. It's under the Originals tab. Um, you won't be disappointed. 24 episodes. We're on, I don't know, about a third of the way through. So... Um, yeah, exciting stuff. It's been very well received. So go and enjoy. Build Show Build Boston. Until next time, Steve Bezik Architect from the Build Show Network. Long live our buildings.